Hey guys, this is a pair of Trigicon Reflex Sights, the classic RX-01 on the left and the more modern RX-30 on the right. These are entirely passively illuminated reflex optics. They don't require a battery. Instead, the reticle is illuminated with a combination of fiber optic and tritium. That's pretty typical for Trigicon. They've always been pretty big on both passive illumination and redundant sources of illumination. ACOGs, for example, are powered by essentially the same arrangement of fiber optic and tritium as these reflex sites are. The RX-01 reflex site on the left was also originally called the ACOG reflex site. I think people tend to assume that the Trigicon reflex sites are older than they actually are. The original RX-01 reflex site was actually only introduced in 1996. The technology for this sort of stuff goes way farther back than that. For example, the Armson OEG occluded eye gun sight, which had a fiber optic illuminated dot, and I believe there was a tritium version, I'm not entirely sure, but I think those were available way back in the Vietnam era, and that is in fact where Glenn Binden, the guy who founded Trigicon, got his start. At the Armson Company. I mean, not Vietnam. I have no idea if Glenn Binden served in Vietnam or not. I guess I could look it up, but it's too late now. The Armson OEG is pretty famous for not actually giving you a clear view through the optic. You have to use it both eyes open using the Binden aiming concept, named after Glenn Binden, even though that concept didn't exist at the time. Another contemporaneous optic that operated on the same principle was the Weaver Quick Point, although that one actually uses a reflector to bounce the illuminated dot into your eye so you can still look through the window. The Weaver Quick Point and the much later Trigicon Reflex series function in essentially the same way as a red dot sight, albeit significantly worse. By the time the Trigicon RX-01 Reflex was available, the Aimpoint electronic sights were already about 20 years old. The RX-01 was a contemporary of the original Aimpoint M68 CCO, and both of them were actually components of the Block 1 SOPMOD project. Not to completely spoil the part of the video where we're going to talk about performance, but you would have to be crazy to pick an RX-01 Reflex over an M68 Aimpoint. So how do these things work? They are basically just an unmagnified version of an ACOG. The dot is a reflection of a fiber optic pipe that gathers light at the front of the optic in case of the RX-01 or the top of the optic in case of the RX-30. There's also a tritium vial on the inside supplying a little bit of additional illumination so these things can be used in completely pitch black environments. Tritium is an isotope of hydrogen and it's relatively harmless unless you were to accidentally ingest some in which case I think it would kill you almost immediately which is why there are a whole bunch of warnings all over the manuals for these things. If you look through one of these optics in a pitch black environment and you don't see any sort of dot at all, that means the tritium vial has failed and you're about to die. And Trigicon recommends that you stick the optic in a plastic bag, wash your hands, and run the hell away. The other possibility is that the tritium has decayed over time. I believe the half-life of tritium is about 11 years, so every 11 years you should expect the brightness of the dot to decrease by half. That's a pretty slow process, especially considering that the illumination provided by the tritium vial is far from being the most important component of the illumination. Even in dim conditions, the fiber optic is doing way more than the tritium is. Also remember that these optics are not as old as you might think. The RX-01 on the left can be no older than about 1996. It's probably a newer production model than that. So the tritium illumination is probably at approximately one quarter of its original brightness, assuming that that model is as old as it could possibly be. The updated RX-30 model was introduced approximately in 2010, so that one's probably at about 50% brightness or better. Also, Trigicon will recondition these things and replace the tritium vials in them for a fee. Assuming you bought one of these things legitimately at retail instead of one that fell off the back of a truck, and assuming that it's still within the service window. I suspect they still service the RX-01 for military buyers, but probably not for civilian buyers anymore. Although the Trigicon Reflex is analogous to a red dot sight, the illumination color on almost all of these is amber. They also have a very deep dark blue tint to the lens, and that helps you pick up the amber, because amber and blue are opposite colors. That's why Transformers posters look the way they do. The actual shooting experience of the Trigicon Reflex, like with all passively illuminated optics, depends completely on your ambient lighting conditions. If you're standing out in the bright sunlight, they work really well. The illuminated dot is very bright and very clean and stands out very strongly against the blue tint of the lens. But all passively illuminated reflex optics, including the Trigicon reflexes, have the same fatal flaw. If you aren't standing in direct sunlight, for example you're inside of a building or a vehicle or under the shade of a tree, but you're still aiming into a completely bright sunlit area, then the dot is very likely to be too dim. If you try to use them indoors, you're going to run into a couple of problems. One, because the light indoors is often reflected from diffuse sources, it's not going to illuminate the dot very well, even though it's relatively bright to your eye. 
so the dot is going to be a little bit too dim in most indoor conditions. It's also completely unusable with a weapon light because when you illuminate a target with a weapon light, whether it's indoors or out, the dot is not going to get at all brighter, but the target is going to get much brighter. The same thing applies to Trijicon's dual illuminated RMR. I think these things are a complete non-starter because battery life and red dot technology is so good you don't have to deal with these weird limitations anymore. And remember that when these things were first introduced in the late 90s, the aim point was already about 20 years old and a very mature piece of technology. There has never been a time where the Trijicon Reflex was the best choice of optic, although it's certainly a serviceable choice in a lot of conditions and environments. There's a very famous picture from the Iraq War showing Tucker Carlson holding an East German AK, and a lot of people tend to focus on Tucker's winning smile and that really gorgeous looking AK. But if you look at the two contractors with him, they both have MP5s with Trijicon RX-01 reflex sights in the BNT style claw mounts. That's exactly how this RX-01 is configured, but unfortunately my MP5 clone has a welded top rail and it cannot use claw mounts, so I cannot put this thing on there for that Tucker Carlson g -Watt LARP. I assume that the Trijicon Reflex must be at its best in the deserts of the Middle East. A lot of RX-01 Reflex sites were given to the Israelis at some point, and they seem to have really, really liked it because at some point they started producing their own. The Meprolite M21 is a scaled up, slightly beefier version of the RX-01 Reflex site. It takes some design elements from the RX-01 and the later RX-30. It has a substantially larger fiber optic collector, so it probably does a little bit better in mixed lighting conditions than either of these two. All right, let's talk about the different models of the Trijicon Reflex. Because it's a Trijicon product, that means that there are hundreds of SKUs, most of which are redundant and actually the same thing as each other. The original RX-01 Reflex has a 24mm objective lens and was available with a couple of different reticle options. The RX-01 has the 6-ish MOA amber dot, and the RX-06 has a larger amber triangle reticle. The later RX-30 model, introduced in approximately 2010, has a massive 42mm objective lens. It is an insanely large optic window, which you think would give you a very wide field of view, but it sort of doesn't. It's so hard to see through the deep, dark blue tint of the RX-30, and it actually feels like you get less field of view than with the RX-01. The RX-30 series is way bigger and way heavier, and in my opinion, the RX-01 is actually the superior optic. The RX-30 moved the fiber optic collector to the top of the optic housing instead of on the front like it is on the RX-01. I tried a bunch of different tests to see if that actually made any real difference. My hypothesis was that the RX-01 would actually do better in mixed lighting conditions. For example, if you're in the shade and pointing out into the sun, well, the fact that your fiber optic collector is pointing towards the sun maybe would help it pick up a little bit of extra light. Ditto when you're using a weapon light. If you're indoors and you shine a weapon light at a target, maybe the light would reflect off of the wall or target close to you and back into the collector and you would get a little bit more brightness on the dot. It doesn't seem to make any difference though, and I assume that part of the reason that they moved the collector to the top and changed it to that smoky color was so that it would not be so noticeable if you viewed the optic from the front. The bright, clear plastic is pretty shiny and pretty reflective on the RX-01. The one on the RX-30 probably has more surface area, so even though it has that dark smoky tint, it doesn't seem to affect it whatsoever. The RX-30 was also available with an amber dot or a green dot, as well as different sizes. So the RX-30 has a large 6-ish MOA dot, and the RX-34 has a smaller 4-ish MOA dot. The green reticle is also an option, as well as a bunch of different SKUs that have different mounts or different Cerakote colors like OD Green and FDE. As always, Trijicon's bark is worse than their bite. Their website looks like a heinous combinatorial explosion of SKUs, but there's actually some sense to it, and most of them are just colors and mount options. The RX-30 series uses the same mounting interface as the ACOG, which makes it significantly easier to find mounts for than the RX-01, which had some weird offset holes that are really only compatible with their own proprietary system. If you can find it, there is a special gooseneck rail for carry handle ARs that fits the RX-01 Reflex. There's also these B&T style claw mounts for HKs, and the usual assortment of flat top adapters as well. One of the early accessories that was included in the NSN designated version, that's the version that was in the Block 1 SOTMOD program, was a screw-in polarizing filter for the front, so I guess you could make the lens even darker to help the dot stand out against certain environments. There's also an aftermarket accessory for these things called the washout remover, which is a tiny little button cell powered LED light that attaches to the front to provide a little bit of additional illumination to that fiber optic collector. Kind of a fascinating idea, turning this thing back into a battery powered red dot, or amber dot as the case may be. One thing I was not expecting about the Trijicon Reflex is how well they do under night vision. 
Maybe it's just because the tritium in both of these examples is somewhat dim. I know a lot of people will say that if you look through a brand new ACOG with a night vision device, it'll bloom out really bad because the tritium is still so bright. That is certainly the case with my recent production ACOG, at least in very dark environments. In mixed lighting conditions, it seems to be pretty fine. The RX-01 and RX-30 both look really surprisingly good under nods. Despite the incredibly dark tint of the lens, that doesn't actually seem to have too much effect on light transmission. They both look surprisingly good, and the tritium illuminated dot is surprisingly usable and crisp. Note that this is not an endorsement of the Trigicon Reflex series as a passive aiming optic. I'm just pointing it out because it's interesting. So there you have it. The RX-01 Reflex is a pretty cool optic, even though it was immediately outclassed on release by an optic that had already been around for 20 years. The choice between a Trigicon RX-01 and an Aimpoint M68 is a no-brainer, and once you get into the later Aimpoint Cop series, it's even less of a brainer, if that makes any sense. These things also aren't old enough to have the same kind of historical cachet as a Weaver Quickpoint or an Armson OEG. And if you want an Armson OEG, they're still being made and still relatively affordable, so you don't have to shell out for a classic Vietnam era one if you don't want to. One peculiar thing about the Trigicon Reflex series is that they seem to have held their value pretty well. I definitely way overpaid for the RX-30. This thing cost me almost $500, although it is fairly recent production, it's in very good shape, and, I mean, they're not super common, so I guess it makes sense. I cannot for the life of me find a real gooseneck mount for the RX-01 series. If I could, man, I would be all over it, but those seem to be very hard to come by. If for some reason you're paranoid about your 100,000 hour battery life red dot dying randomly in the middle of the apocalypse and being unable to find a replacement battery, so you really, really want one of these things, you should probably just go ahead and buy the Meprolite M21 because it's new production, more affordable than the old Trigicons, and it'll come with fresh tritium. Anyway, that's the show, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this channel and you like this strange content, then please subscribe and consider supporting me directly via Subscribestar. There's a link in the video description. If you join up, you will get access to early videos. You can watch the archived live show that I do with Brassfax. You get secret access to a special Discord channel that you don't want to be in anyway, and it'll help me overpay for discontinued optics on Gunbroker. See you guys next time.